You probably have already seen system of linear equation before, and you have learned how to solve such a system of linear equation. What is the method that you use to solve such a system? There's a name for such a method. What's the name of the method? It's named after a person. Gauss. The method is called Gaussian elimination. Is it? It's Gaussian elimination. The basic steps in a Gaussian elimination is called elementary rule operations. Let's talk about that next. Elementary rule operations. We will be talking about these operations a lot throughout the semester, and we will give them abbreviation. The abbreviation is ERO. There are three types of ERO. The first one is interchange, the second one scaling, and the third one rule addition. For interchange, when we interchange, when we apply an interchange ERO, we interchange row I and the row J. We interchange two rows of A matrix, then we get B matrix. With the scaling, we scale a particular row of, in this case, row I. Replace row I with the scaled version of row I, and we get B. This is and this is scaling C is a non-zero number. With a row addition, we add C times row I to row J. For example, this is our A matrix, and we want to apply some E O E R O. So this is our A matrix, right? And now suppose we apply the ERO of scaling. Second row of A scale the second row of A by half. Then we get what do we have here? Because only the second row is scaled, so the first row and the third row remain the same. Only the second row is scaled by half. So after this, there are two elements, two zero. After we multiply by half, we get one zero. So that's an example of scaling ERO. Now suppose we apply row interchange on this matrix. Say R1 and R2 are interchanged. The third row remain the same. The second row will go to the first row, and the first row will come down to the second row. Now a question. Just now we have applied. There are three types of ERO. Interchange, scaling, and row addition. Um, a, a matrix A, to get a matrix B. If we interchange these two rows, we get B, a B matrix. Now, is it possible to apply an ERO on B to get back A? In this interchange, in this example of interchange, we interchange row I and row J, and we get this matrix B. Now, is it possible that we apply a ERO to get back A? Is it possible to do this? Is it possible that we apply one of the ERO, interchange, scaling, or row addition to get back A? Is it possible to do that? If it's possible, what is the ERO to do here? What can we do here to get back A? Well, we interchange row I and row J, right? Now, if we interchange row I and row J again, do we get back A? Yes, indeed. We just change them back, interchange them back, then we get A. And for the other two, I will leave them as exercises. What is the ERO that we can apply on matrix B to get back A? Okay, and there indeed is a ERO that we can apply on B to get back A. And this is show this is show that ERO are reversible. Meaning that when we apply an ERO on A, we can always apply another ERO on this matrix B to get back A. And we apply a scaling on A to get B, then we get another ERO to get back A. And if we apply raw addition to get B, we can apply another ERO to get back A. So ERO are reversible. 
it can be reversed. I will leave the other two as exercises. You can fill in these operations. One type of matrix that you get in the procedure of a Gaussian elimination is called raw echelon form. And we will give it the abbreviation REF. REF means raw echelon form. Before I formally define what a raw echelon form is, let me give you an example. This is what we call a raw echelon form. And why did it get the, get the name? Because if we mark out the, the zero coefficient, we draw a line to separate the zero, the, the bottom and the top, the lower left and the upper right. The lower left will be zero coefficient, will be zeros, and the upper right will be, not, would have some non-zero coefficient. And this line that we draw here has a staircase-like structure. So this is why it's called echelon, raw echelon form. We say a matrix is in raw echelon form if it satisfies property 1, 2, 3. Now let's write down this property 1, 2, 3. They are a little bit long. The first property, non-zero rows lie above every zero row. So all the zero rows are at the bottom and the non-zero rows are at the top. Let's look at the example that we just had. Here in this example, we have one zero rows and it's indeed at the bottom. So non-zero rows lie above the zero rows, lie, lie above every zero row. The description of the second property is a little bit long. It says leading entry. What is a leading entry? Leading entry. Let's look at the example and, and see what a leading entry is. This is what we call a leading entry. It's the leftmost entry, non-zero entry of a non-zero. This is a non-zero row. For example, this is a non-zero row. And the leftmost non-zero entry will be this one. So this will make this a leading entry. So this would be a leading entry. And similarly, for this row, for the second row, we would have leading entry right here. And for the third row, where's the leading entry? Zero, 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 zero. So the leftmost non-zero entry would be here. So this is a leading entry as well. Let me mark the leading entry with a different color. This is red and this is blue. And the second property said that the leading entry of a non-zero row, so if, for example, the third row, the leading entry of a non-zero row lies to the right of the column containing the leading entry of any preceding row. So what is preceding row? This is the third row, so the preceding rows will be row 1, the first row and the second row. These are the preceding rows. And now if we are talking about the second row here, then the preceding row would be the first row. Alright, it says that the leading entry of a non-zero row, for example, the second row, the leading entry is here, it lies to the right of the column containing the leading entry of any preceding row. So the preceding row will be the first row, right? And then um, the column that contain the leading entry of the first row is right here. And it says that this leading entry, it's at the right of this column. That's the second property. As another example, for example, for the third row, this is the leading entry, right? And it lies, it lies to the right, it lies to the right of the column containing the leading entry of any preceding row. And what are the columns that contains the leading entry of preceding row? For the third row, the preceding row will be first row and the second row. This is the column that contains the leading entry of the first row. And this is the column that contains the leading entry of the second row. Row, and indeed, this leading entry lies to the right of 
this column and this column. So indeed, the second property is satisfied in this example. All right, the third property. The third property is easier. The entries below leading entries are zero. For example, this is a leading entry, and the entries below the leading entries are indeed zero. A leading entry here, the entries below the leading entry, zero, zero. A leading entry here, the entry below the leading entry, zero. Okay, so the, all three properties are satisfied, this example. So this is indeed a raw echelon form. We say a matrix is in reduced raw echelon form. And we give it the abbreviation R R E F. If it satisfies property one, two, three, and also four and five. Property four entries above leading entries are zero. For example, in here, the entries above leading entries zero. Entries above this is a leading entry. The entry above the leading entries are zero. So that's property number four. Number five, leading entries are one. Leading entry equal to one, leading entry equal to one, leading entry equal to one. So this matrix, not only is it a REF, it's in REF, it's also in RREF because it satisfies property one, two, three, and also properties four and five. And with the Gaussian elimination, we will be able to convert a matrix to an REF to reduce raw echelon form. But what's so good about reduced raw echelon form? Suppose I have a system of linear equation Rx equal to C vector, and the augmented matrix Rc is this matrix. This is actually the same matrix that we saw earlier. And this matrix is already, we have seen that it's already in reduced raw echelon form. Now let's see what's so good about reduced raw echelon form. I'm sure you must have seen it before, but let's see it again. Let's first write down the system of linear equation corresponding to this augmented matrix. So this will correspond to the coefficient of x1, the coefficient of x2, coefficient of x3 and coefficient of x4 and coefficient of x5. So this is a system of five variables. Now let's write down the system of linear equation. For the first row, for the first row here, we can write down the system of a linear equation x2, x3, the coefficient corresponds to x3 is 0. And the coefficient for x4 is minus 1, minus x4. And the coefficient for x5 is again 0, equal to 1. And for the second row, we can write down x3 minus 2 times x4 equal to 6. And for the third row, we can write down x5 equal to 2. Now we can easily solve this system of linear equation, can we? Now we have x5 equal to 2, x2 equal to 1 plus x4, x3 equal to 6 plus 2 times x4. How about x1? x1 is free. Actually, x4 is also free. x2 is related to x4, x3 related to x4 x5 equal to 2, x1 is free, and x4 is also free. x1 and x4 both are free variables. They can be any real number. So, if the augmented matrix is in reduced rational form, then the system of linear equations can be easily solved. So, whenever we are given a system of linear equation, one approach to solve it is to first to convert the augmented matrix into reduced raw echelon form using Gaussian elimination. And then we can easily obtain the solution. Theorem 1.4 says every matrix, every matrix can be transformed into one and only one reduced raw echelon form using elementary raw operation into one and the only one. One and the only one. There's only one reduced raw echelon form for each matrix, for a matrix. 
and the proof can be found in Appendix E. You can look it up if you're interested in the proof. Now suppose we have an augmented matrix that represents a system of linear equation ax equal to b, and we have transformed it into reduced row echelon form. The reduced row echelon form is given in the form rc. This is the reduced row echelon form of a a b augmented matrix a b. The system corresponding to r x equal to c would be much easier to solve as we have already seen. But now we still need one very important property that relates the solution of AX equal to B and the solution of RX equal to C. And it turns out that they have the same solution set. So if we can solve RX equal to C, then we have in fact solved AX equal to B. And the, this, the proof for such a property, we will talk about this property later in section 2.3. So here's the general procedure. We solve a system of linear equation. First, we form the augmented matrix. And then we find the reduced row echelon form corresponding to this augmented matrix. We will talk about how to find this in section 1.4, and that's the, that's the Gaussian elimination method. And then in the second step, we solve for Rx equal to C, which, is the, which has the same solution set as Ax equal to B. A question. Suppose we have a system of linear equation with augmented matrix given like this. This is the augmented matrix. Is such a system consistent? Let's try to solve it. We can write down the system of linear equation corresponding to it has three equations, right? So it has a three equation. We can write down the three equation and try to solve it. The last equation, what would be the last equation? We can see that the last equation well, we can write down the first two equations as well. For the first two equations, it will be x2 equal to 1, and then x3 equal to 2. And the last equation is 0 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we get a1, 0 equal to 1. So does this system have a solution? It has no solution at all. So it's not consistent. So whenever an augmented matrix contains a row of the form 0, 0, 0, and then a number d, d is not equal to 0, like what we have here, 0, 0, 0, and the last entry is non zero. 0, 0, 0, and the entry non zero, d is not equal to 0, then the system has no solution. It's inconsistent. It has no solution.